A warm welcome to this week's edition of Breeding to Win. We're only a couple of days away from this year's CTS Ready to Run sale. We've got a busy show in store for you, so let's dive in and take a look at what you can look forward to on tonight's show. Fee catches up with Vion Smith for a CTS Ready to Run sale update. We look at a Ready to Run draft from Claverflay and speak to John Costa. We look at the ready to run draft from Drakenstein as well as the draft from Beaumont Stud. We chat to John Freeman who talks about Wiley Hall as to promote his progeny that Normandy has on sale. Our stallion of the week is Coup de Gras and we look at our fall of the week as well. The CTS Ready to Run sale takes place this Friday, the 23rd of November at Durbanville Racecourse. Fiona chats to the CTS CEO, Vion Smith, about the sale. Well, with just four days to go to the CTS Ready to Run sale, it's great to catch up with Vian Smith this morning. Vian, the interest for this sale has been really great, hasn't it? It really has. There seems to be a very positive vibe around the sale, and uh, it's less than a week to go, and I can't believe how the time flies, and uh, we've, we're very excited to get to get going now. And at the venue, everything in place, stables already? Absolutely, everything's in place, um, and Dalton and the team from Agri Expo. I don't know what we'd ever do without them. You know, whatever problems arise, they just seem to find solutions for us, and uh, yeah, we're ready to go. The horses will be coming in. You know, in the next uh, in the next couple of days, and, uh, and we'll be ready for, for Thursday viewing. So primarily viewing will be on Thursday. Yes, and that's you've got uh, the gallops on Friday. Absolutely. So Thursday is going to be the main viewing day, um, um, and we any more Thursday night with a little sundowner braai. Um, kudos, kudos sponsoring a, a sundowner braai, and uh, yeah, everyone welcome. Please just get in touch if you if you are going to make it, and uh, then straight into gallops Friday morning. We'll start the gallops at 9:30. Um, um, and the breakfast is being served uh, during the gallops as well. And we anticipate the get-ups should be done, you know, probably 12 o'clock at the very latest. Um, um, and then we'll just give the, the, the vendors an, an hour and a half gap to just, you know, get their horses ready for viewing again. Um, uh, so we, we're aiming to get, get viewing going half past one on, on Friday again, which will still give, you know, buyers and prospective buyers and uh, four and a half hours before the sale starts to have a look at their, you know, final look at their horses before uh, before the bidding starts. And the sale starts at six, it's going to be an absolutely fantastic event. Yeah, absolutely, I'm really looking forward to it. And it is, you know, it's a 116 horses catalogue, so, uh, um, it's, you know, smaller smaller compared to last year, so it, it uh, yeah, that makes for an action-packed evening. But the Breeding to Win team have been very lucky. We've, we've got around and seen quite a few of these horses going through their paces, and they certainly look to be a really nice bunch with some beautiful actions. I've heard some, yeah, I've heard some great reports. and. Uh, on paper, you know, catalog and pedigree-wise, it's a it's a very very strong catalog, and to hear that you know that's being backed up by some some really impressive movers and some 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 early types, um, uh, you know, bodes well for a successful sale. Yeah, as I said, you know, there's been plenty of talk and hype about this sale, and, and to get the buyers there and the international buyers as well is is absolutely fantastic. And of course, some really really good horses come off of this sale. Absolutely, you know, the sales had a, a long history of producing you know Group One winners, and uh, and then there's of course the you know the added incentive of running for that two and a half million rand and uh, next Saturday, so it's. Uh, you know that's that's hugely exciting to have a you know a three horse three old horse running for two and a half million rand that early in his career is a huge benefit and uh, and this year you know the, the incentive is even so much greater because despite the sale being significantly smaller than in previous years the, the stakes for the race is still two and a half million rand next year so uh, you know you, you've got a you've got a more a better than you know one and eight chance to get a to get a horse on the race which is you know which is from my perspective great odds yeah it's going to be an absolutely fantastic day, uh, weekend it's a race day that i really really look forward to yeah it is always a great race day um, um and yeah certainly very much looking forward to it and being what's also great is for anyone who can't make the sale it's going to be on um teletrack live web, web streaming absolutely it's uh, live web streaming as as usual and and you can just go onto our website catfavoritesales.com to pick up the the, the live stream and anyone who still wants to get a table and a buyer's card, who must they get hold of? Yes, there's, you know, we, we've had an overwhelming response, um, uh, but we'll always make a plan for, you know, to, to accommodate extra buyers and uh, just get in touch with the CTS office, either speak to Josie or Kirsty or Kerry, and they'll, you know, they'll be able to assist with any arrangements that need to be made. Perfect. It's always fantastic. The hospitality is second to none. It really is.
really is. It's a, you know, we always have fun, um, um, and I think that's a, a major part of the CTS brand is the, you know, the events that we put put up for sales. It's not just a normal wholesale sale, and it really is. It's it's something that's and very enjoyable to attend, and, uh, and we're looking forward to full house again. It's going to be a really, really busy week for you, Van, and all the team, but really looking forward to seeing you there out at the sales on Thursday and watching the gallops, obviously, Friday, and then the great sale on Friday evening. Thanks for chatting to us. Thanks for the update. Look forward to seeing you there. Thanks for you. Look forward to it. Always good to catch up with Vianne Smith. Can't wait for this sale. It's always a great event. And of course, we've got the races on the Saturday. So get yourselves there to look at the horses. They're arriving Wednesday, viewing from Thursday. And then obviously, we've got the gallops Friday and then the sale 6 o'clock Friday evening. Clarvaflay are known for prepping their youngsters spot on for this ready-to-run sale. John Costa talks about his draft. Well, the ready-to-run sale is just around the corner and it's lovely to be catching up with John Costa this evening to find out all about Clarvaflay's very, very special draft going to the sale. John, it's always lovely to have you on the show. Thanks for taking the time this evening. Thanks, Fee. You've once again got a super draft going to the sale. Yeah, we have. We, uh, you know, we've got a we've got a wonderful bunch of guys that uh, enjoy Panuki. Uh, this is our sixth venture into Panuki, um, and we really enjoy it. Uh, you know, it gives the guys something else to 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 get excited about. And the sale has been a good sale for us in the past. So yeah, very excited. Looking at your pedigrees, you're very very well represented by some really top stallions. You know, if you, we do a lot of homework, and we try and choose stallions that are either proven stallions or young stallions that are coming through the ranks. And I th really think we've hit the, 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 the hammer on the, or the nail on the head uh, with, this, with this bunch. Uh, we've got some outstanding stallions, young horses like uh, Pomodoro and Twice Over that have really done well in their first crops. And then we've also got um, first season size like uh, uh, Master of My Fate and, and uh, Soft Falling Rain. And then some great uh, old stallions like, uh, like Silvana, you know. So we've got, a, we've got a really nice uh, bunch. And then, of course, we've got some international stallions like Camelot as well. Yeah, it looks like an absolutely superb draft. And uh, one that uh, catches my eye is number, lot number 15, a lovely Silvano. Yeah, look, she's on fire by Jetmaster. Uh, she was a fantastic filly, Group 2 winner. But the exciting thing about her is that she's had four winners so far, and three of them are black-top horses. Um, this is a superb colt. He's got a wonderful action, uh, the kind of horse that you'd expect to be on Book 1 or National Yearling Sales. And uh, this year you've done it a little bit differently. They've been prepped at Sutendale by Julia Pilbeam, and I believe she's done a fantastic job. She's done a wonderful job. Julia's a fantastic horsewoman. She allows the horses to come on their own time. Um, she doesn't push them at all. Uh, she's not hard on them. Uh, the horses are looking great. We were out there the other day. And uh, yeah, it's fantastic to work with Julia. And uh, we're just hoping that uh, come sales day that the people will be there. And when will you be moving the horses to the sales grounds? I know they're galloping on the morning of the sale, but I assume, you, I assume you'll be there a few days before. Yes, I'm sure Julie will go in just so they can get used to it. But I think a new concept, galloping in the morning and uh, selling in the evening, it's, uh, it's, it's exciting because you, you really capture the market for the whole day. Um, so yeah, we're hoping, we're hoping it's going to be great. You know, two and a half million rand race. Uh, I think you've got a one in seven chance of actually not, uh, getting into the race, which is superb odds for anybody who's buying. And uh, in the past, we've had really good results in the race itself. Well, it's a fantastic seller. As I said, your draft stands out, but it, it, it's a good catalogue, a really strong catalogue, and some top horses have come out of this, uh, this sale. They have a uh, fee, and as I was saying early on, you know, when you look at the stallions, I mean, uh, you know, just the fact that we've got a Camelot on the sale, you know, Camelot already, uh, with only three crops to race, has had two classic winners. Uh, La Trobe won the Irish, um, the Irish Derby, and Athena won the Belmont Oaks. So for South Africans to be able to get that kind of quality in South Africa is fabulous. And, and you know, we've, we've seen their actions, they've got great actions. So uh, I think it's going to be very exciting. And for the buyer, it's wonderful to have something you can get on with there. They are literally, they're ready to run. Well, a lot of them are, you know, and, uh, and that is the beauty of it. It obviously takes a lot of cost out of it. 
um, for the buyers and um, and as you say you know the ready to run sales just around the corner and as we said the incentive of all these big races these horses can run in is, is pretty special it is special and I think it's important for the buyers as well and you have to take your hats off to the sales company you know to 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 collect the funds for races like this is is is, is not easy um, so when the buyers know that they actually have got a chance of earning really good money if they buy the right type of horse uh, you know it's an incentive yeah, and it's always, uh, the CTS always go all out. It's always a fantastic sale. And, uh, of course, the hospitality is fantastic as well. Yeah, you know, we got used to it. Uh, when they do something, they do it properly. Uh, and they really go out of their way to get buyers down there. You know, they, they, uh, they market extremely well. They're happy to fly the buyers down. They're happy to pay for their accommodation. So, really, there is no excuse not to come. And, you know, I say it every time we go on interview, uh, if you're not at a sale, you're not giving yourself a fair chance because you might just find the horse that could change your life. Well, John, I'm certainly looking forward to seeing your draft in the flesh and watching them gallop. They certainly look to be a very, very smart draft. And looking forward to seeing you sell well at the Ready to Run sale. Thank you very much, Hugh. Well, once again, Clava Flair have got a fantastic draft going to the Ready to Run sale. It was lovely catching up with John Costa this evening, and I'm looking forward to seeing those horses on the 23rd of November. Drakenstein Stud are represented by top stallions Dynasty, Trippy, as well as What a Winter. No one could ask for more from one of the top breeding establishments. Drakenstein have four smashing colts going to the November ready to run sale, two for Drakenstein and two as agent. And we were lucky enough this morning to see them going through their paces on the track and they really are stretching out beautifully. Now Jason May is the man responsible for prepping these horses and he's doing a fantastic job and Jason is with me this morning. Jason, it's lovely to be here and see the horses working. Lovely to see you. Now you really have done a very good job with these horses. They're working beautifully this morning. What is their daily routine? Um, we, we, we try to mimic what trainers do and um, try to stick to the routine that, that the horse will be doing when it goes into training. You've done a, a really good job, I must say, stretching out fantastically this morning. And they've had a look at Durbanville Racecourse, haven't they, once? And they'll go there again before the sale? Yeah, we'll try to get there twice, two times before we go to, to the real gallops and be there for the sale. And they're a very smart bunch pedigree-wise as well. Um, from Drakenstein, you've got Dr. 110, who's a lovely water winter cult. Yeah, water winter cult um, out of Niaba, related to Galileo's Night, Komatipur, and obviously Krog Valley. And then lot 112 is a, a smashing trippy cult. Uh, Tor Cotton, he is the half-brother of Frank Lloyd Wright. Um, for me, my best one. Um, and I was blown away how he stretched this morning. I, I couldn't be happy. Well, they're two really, really smart looking individuals. They've got nice size about them too. Yes, the right type of horse for ready to run sale. So we'll just hope, hope and pray let everything be fine. And then you've got two nice colts as agent. Uh, we'll start with Lot 70, who is um, bag of tricks as Dynasty Colt. Yeah, I started, he's by, uh, he's by Dynasty. Um, it's an agent horse, so I like the way he stretched out as well. And Lot 98 is Twilight Zone, uh, another water winter colt. Water winter out of a Dynasty mare. There's nothing more you'd have to ask for. Yeah, they he's stretched, he stretched out very well as well. Yeah, they certainly did. Four very, very nice looking horses. And when it comes to the time going to Durnville, you'll be going with them? I'll definitely be at the sales. I, I can't wait. Um, I like sales and I like racing, so I'll be there. You're with them every step of the way. Well, you're a trainer in the making looking at those horses work this morning. And you were telling me you've got quite a good strike rate with these um, ready to run horses in, in the sales races. You've done really well. Yes, I've done very well. Um, uh, we uh, the first first year the sale happened. We, um, I had Zambezi River, then obviously Budapest came up from Joburg, and then after that was Catlin, which I'm looking forward to what she's going to bring when the summer season really gets kicking. And you'll be following these closely as well in the future. I'll definitely will be every well, step of the way. Well, thank you very much for taking the time this morning, Jason. I look forward to seeing you at the Durnville Ready to Run sales. Look forward.
As the team were here to take a look at the ready-to-run sales horses from the Drakenstein stud, it seemed like a good opportunity to have a look at the foals, and there's some superb foals on the ground here at Drakenstein, and with me this morning is Kevin Somerville. Kevin, it looks like a lovely bunch on the ground, some super foals. Yeah, thanks, Fee. Um, you know, that's the next generation, I suppose. Um, I could say the future. Um, yeah, we've got some, uh, you know, lovely foals uh, on the ground, and yeah, it is, it's planning for the future. That's exactly what it is. And quite excited by the Futuras. They look a, a lovely size. They should look to have really thrown well. Yes, um, you know, he's a, he's a beautiful horse, and, and obviously, you know, a horse that, uh, as a racehorse, was a, was a champion, a four-time Group 1 winner. Um, and he's been well supported in his first two years. Uh, so, and I, in fact, I think we're getting a better bunch of foals this year than we did uh, last year. So, um, the, the better quality mare that you that you're sending him, I think he's, he's he matches well with them, and uh, and, he, and he produces a very high quality foal. Yeah, he was a super racehorse himself, and I'm really looking forward to seeing his his progeny race. Mm. And you've got some nice horses going to the CTS Cape Premier Yearling Sale. We do, we do. Um, yeah, we've what's name uh, as always. We you know we try and select a nice bunch for that. It's a, it's a really strong sale and very competitive. But um, I think also what's also nice is uh, you know, I spoke to Kerry Jack and. And she said to me that there, there are a number of Futuras going to that sale as well. And uh, I think that might have been the, you know, the, the challenge for Futura is obviously he was a later maturing horse, but um, you know, can he cope with a little bit of speed that, uh, that perhaps some of the breeders are going to give him? And uh, uh, I think he's got 10 or 12 um, horses on that sale. So that, that's really encouraging. Um, I mean, he should really, you should be a, a, an extremely popular sire at that sale. Um, he's a, you know, he's a gorgeous looking animal and uh, he's, He's grown into a real man now and uh, you know he, he should be getting really good looking stock and I'd be surprised uh, if there's not a trainer out there that doesn't want to buy one. The foals say it all but you've had some really good quality mares going to Futura this season. No we have Fee, you know we, um, I su you know in the first year it's obviously you're a little bit nervous about uh, you know about the horse or any any stallion going to stud but um, you know, we've got uh, nine foals out in Croft you know now yearlings and they they're high quality and uh, so you know, decided to just really step it up um, this year and send in some beautiful horses uh, uh, it would have been nice if the mares had come across here but uh, the there's a dark bay mare there cat in the moon that she's got a uh, futura filly and there's also dawn rising who's got a futura filly as well so you know, those are probably not ones that are going to go to sale. You know, we'll probably race those ourselves, but they, they are high quality. And, uh, you know, it's, yeah, it's nice to see when you send him nice mares that he gets you nice looking horses. That's always the, the challenge. But he's a, you know, he's a beautiful horse, uh, you know, four-time Group 1 winner by Dynasty. I'm not sure what more you can ask for. No, I think the foals are a little bit shy to, to come close to us, but what I've seen from here, he really is stamping them well. And there's, there's lots of quality there and lots of size, which is what you want, and they really do look well. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Fian. But uh, look, we've 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 sent him a little bit of a mixed budget to sort of see how he copes with all of that, and uh, we have sent him a number of um, trippy trippy mares in the, in the in the first year. Um, a group one with a sparkling gem as well, um, and he can he seems to be able to cope with the speed as well. So um, you know that's a nice attribute to have. Um, you know, I think obviously people were being out of, being out of a badger's drift mare. Um, and maybe being a little bit of a later maturing horse, you know, can he cope with that sort of speed? And uh, he seems to have coped with no problem. And uh, we've got some really, really outstanding uh, yearlings, um, mainly, mainly fillies. So you're not really, people are not going to really see them at the sales. Um, we'll probably race all of those ourselves. But um, very, very happy with, uh, with uh, the quality of the Futuras. And I believe you had another Futura born last night. Yes, yes. Um, out, of a, out of a half sister to Lana Falcon. You know, it's out of a philanthropist mayor, Gaboski, who unfortunately she, she could never race. But... Um, you know, this, the, the pedigree is very strong and we're very happy with the first fall. Well, exciting times ahead. I'm really looking forward to seeing them race. It must be really um, rewarding for you to see them from foals going forward. Yeah, I think that that's what Gaynor um, enjoys the most. Um, you know, breeding the foals here, getting them, raising them, um, selecting the ones that go to the sales, uh, you know, mainly the colts and then keeping the fillies and, and, you know, hopefully building each year from there. That's the, that's the plan and get bigger and stronger and, you know, improve our bloodlines better and, you know, there's no doubt that Futura will do that for us as well. Well, thank you very much for having us here this morning. We wish you all the best for the Ready to Run sale. And uh, I'll be watching these little fellows closely as they grow up. And we will visit you again sometime soon, I hope. Thank you, Kevin. No, thank you, Fee. Thank you. But it's always a treat to be here at Drakenstein. And as I said, the mares and foals are looking out of this world. They really do look well. And there's some beautiful, beautiful Futuras on the ground.
Anton Shepard's Beaumont Stud needs no introduction to the CTS sale. One just has to cast their mind back to one of the country's champion racehorses, Variety Club, and you'll know what type of horse Anton breeds. Beaumont Stud have a super draft of eight going to the ready to run sale. They've been really well prepped here at the Candice Bass Robinson stable. And with me this morning is Anton Shepherd to have a chat to me about them. Anton, lovely to have you on the show. Morning, Fee. Good to be here. You've got a super draft. You've got eight going, two Jackson Colts and the rest are fillies. Yeah, and I'd be quite excited about it. Um, uh, I haven't seen the horses for, for quite a while. They left the farm in August, so it's going to be exciting to see what they actually turn out, turned out like and looking, but uh, all I've heard is good things. Yeah, I know Candice is very happy with them, and, and we filmed them galloping at Durbanville on Wednesday, and they went through their paces particularly well. I hear so. I hear so. I haven't seen the gallops yet, but uh, that's why I'm here. So I'm, we'll be doing a little bit of work later on, going through them and having a look. Exciting bunch. Uh, they'll be moving to Durbanville on, on Wednesday, and of course uh, the viewing is on Thursday, and then they get to gallop Friday morning for the public, which is really exciting. It is, and uh, for the first time in a good couple of months, there's a little bit of a, a vibe running around the cell, which is which is, is very encouraging. Um, and they are well bred. They, they, the stallions are, are, are all successful stallions. Um, and yeah, we're looking forward to it. Yeah, chatting to Vianne Smith, we've got uh, lots of buyers showing lots of interest, and of course, we've got international buyers as well, so that's fantastic. Yeah, good. Uh, the industry needs it badly. Um, we need to have a good sell, and hopefully, this is the beginning of an uh, upturn for us as breeders. And it's a, a super weekend because we've got the sale, we've got the big race day on Saturday, so really great incentive. And of course, those races that you qualify for if you buy a horse off the ready to run sale. It makes all the sense in the world. Um, for us as breeders, I shouldn't actually be saying this because we've got to keep the horses for so much longer. Um, not the greatest thing for cash flow, but if I was a buyer, this is possibly the route that I would go. Um, it just gives you a lot more to make a, a, a better decision on. Well, it's uh, been a super successful sale in the past and really good horses have, have come out of it and I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be fantastic, isn't it? So am I, and the whole weekend. A yes. bit of fun. It's going to be brilliant. Really looking forward to seeing you there, Anton. Thanks lovely. for your time this morning. You've got a lovely draft. Great. Sell well. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. Good to have Anton Shepherd on the show. Fantastic draft of eight going to the Ready to Run sale on Friday. It's storming at him. One of the last possible gasp for the judge of Thriller. What a finish to the Melbourne Cup. The Brave is under pressure when they turn in. It's been a relentless run cup. Who's going to be the last man standing? Backling on two, then wings of eagles, cliffs of moha, wings of eagles, swooping though, and wings of eagles get up to win. His 3,000th winner, Vertigon Devon July, Kauting Sensui Summer Cup. Veronica Folks's Normandy stud is acting agent for 10 lots on the sale, seven of which are by stallion Wiley Hall. John Freeman tells us more about the stallion. Veronica Folks from Normandy Stud has a superb draft going to next month's November ready to run sale and she's very well represented by stallion Wiley Hall and with me is John Freeman to chat about Wiley Hall. I think she's got seven, John, on the sale by yeah, Wiley Yeah, I believe Hall. so. Um, seven or eight, yeah. They, um um, Oscar called me about to say, um, uh, would I please interview um, 
about Wiley Hall being on. And I said, of course. Um, you know, he's got his first crop of two-year-olds running this year. Um, very exciting. Um, I bought into two of them myself, so I'm, I'm very happy. And um, I bought for clients a very, very nice filly from uh, um, Lammerskral stud at the National Yearning Sales. And they sold the cell topping filly at the two-year-old sale um, by Wiley Hall. You know, he was a heck of a racehorse. He won three. Group, he was first past the post in three Group One races. Uh, very versatile because he beat a uh, course specialist White Line Fever over 1,400 meters at Turfentine in a very fine performance with his ears pricked. Um, he beat Mudgmo in the Champions Challenge, and of course there was that famous Sturban July incident with Legislate. Um, He's a half-brother to Absolute Champion, who's a, a champion in Hong Kong, holds a 1,000-meter track record in Hong Kong. And in fact, in that race, um, he uh, set the world's best sprint performance, beating Silent Witness in the Cathay Pacific uh, Sprint, a, a Group 1 race. Um, Wiley Hall's father, Reduce Choice, needs no explanation. I mean, he is, without a doubt, the king of Australian size. He took over the crown from his famous father, Dane Hill. And, and he's now got sons like Snitchell, and he's got a new son called Benatar, who's had uh, 10 stakes winners from only two crops racing. Um, and Burgundy, who is a new sire in, in, in New Zealand. Um, Reduce Choice had uh, 50 sons at stud in his own lifetime, and he's still alive, I mean, he's still, and counting. And eight of them had Group 1 winners already. Um, I don't think there are many sires in the world that have that record in their own lifetime. So. We don't need to introduce Reduce Choice, it speaks for itself. He's, he, uh, Wiley Hall's Dam has produced a, uh, a champion and two Group 1 winners, very few mares do that. Then the, one of the best things that happened is one of his shareholders, Dr. Marianne Thompson, says that she, uh, at an AGM this year, said she performs um, corrective surgery on a lot of foals' legs at, at birth and said she hasn't seen a Wiley Hall at her sur a table yet because they come out with everything in the right place and that's a big plus. Perfection. So at the gallops of the Ready to Run sale we'll see some hopefully see some nice action. So Norman, do you the, the only vendor with Wiley Halls on the sale? Yeah, well, if they're half as good as he is, we're going to win money. Well, thanks very much for chatting to us. We'll look forward to seeing you out at those sales and, and watching those horses gallop, and let's hope they go for some good money. Thanks. thanks. Pleasure. For you. Me too. The well-bred son of Tappet, Coup de Gras, is out of the Stormcat Mare home court. He stands at Claverflay Stud for a service fee of only 50,000 Rand. You know, when you add uh, good looks to racing performance, and in the female line alone, there are three reins to course mares, which is massive. Um, uh, then, 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 then it is exciting. So I think we've got the whole package. We've got the stallion for sure uh, with Tappet. Uh, we've got the mayor who was talented and she herself out of an extremely talented filly. She was champion four-year-old uh, filly in America. She won the Breeders' Cup. She won four group ones. She was placed in six other group ones. I mean, it's a huge, huge class, racing class there. And then uh, the mayor being by Stormcat. And as we've just spoken about Stormcat, really making his mark as a, a brood messiah of science. to take a look at this week's Fall of the Week.
Well, that's a wrap for this week's edition of Breeding to Win. We look forward to you joining us next week for more Breeding to Win action. We leave you with Andrew Bond, who tells us more about Bayshore Barn. From myself, Julie Alexander, and the rest of the Breeding to Win team, goodbye. Sharon Patterson is one of the founding members of the Bayshore Barn, which is named after one of her great horses. But she runs the Bayshore Barn in partnership with her son, Sean Patterson, and her husband, Peter. And they're involved in various different aspects of bringing horses up and giving them a new lease in life when perhaps the rigors of horse racing have taken their toll. Let's go and catch up with Sharon Patterson at the Bayshore Barn and first of all, find out about match winner. Match winner was just something else, you know, he was a tiny little horse who could run like anything. We had the third in the derby that year, which was called Bayshore Towers, and that's who we've named our stables after. But before that, Andrew, I started in racing, uh, in riding work when I was 16, and I used to ride in amateur races and hurdle races and all that. And then I had, my main career was show jumping. So I spent a year in Ireland touring the shows and competing and then came back and married a jockey, so Sean's father. And uh, that's how I got into racing. Well, I don't think there are too many people in the world that can say that they've uh, been married to two Pattersons. It's just quite <laughs> remarkable that they're unrelated. One is a, a very fine, gentle, self-effacing man in... in uh, Reed Patterson, of course, who's in partnership with Stanley Ferreira. And uh, Peter Patterson, also a very similar kind of human being, gentle, kind, and uh, very passionate about his horses. Yeah. Peter still helps us with the yard. You know, he does a lot of work in the background. And um, so it's a very much a family affair. Uh, Sean looks after the main yard. And yeah. We're just passionate about our horses. I just pinch myself every night when I come and check the horses, how lucky I am. Well, the first time that I really became aware of the Bayshore Barn was when I looked at your face after Louis the King had won the Triple Crown. And that tells a story in itself, but uh, we'd love you to pick it up from there. Yes, Louis was a very special horse. Jeff sent him to me to back and, and pre-train. And along came Tion van der Feyfer wanting another horse. Uh, he had one with me already. And the rest is history. He reminded me a lot of my horse match winner. Very unassuming, beautiful action, walked like an absolute panther, and just was so easy to back and pre-train them. And yeah, and then he went into Jeff. So I've always been very involved and very passionate about the horse. We were very lucky to back Dance with the Devil, I uh, mean, for St. John. She, she was a bit of a different kettle of fish. First day, Sean rode her, she bucked him off. <laughs> so, but I was chatting to St. John the other day about her, and I said, did you know how good she was? And he said, yes, always. We always knew how good she was. And you sort of, my ex-husband Reed always said, you know how good a horse is from his first gallop, or basically whether he's above average. Um, they tell you that first time you send them along a bit. We do babies for Roy Magna, and um, Paul Matchett. So we, we do a lucky hoodlarkers and a lot of rehab patients, you know, knee surgery, throat surgery. Our most successful rehab was a horse called Storm Surf and he came with a fracture, slab fracture of his knee and we had him for a year 
as a four-year-old. He then went back to Komnaidu and he's won seven races on the poly track. And he's, Mr. Moodley, Roy Moodley has just given him to us to become a, a lead pony. So Stormy's come home. They have to be a very special type of animal. The likes of Goldie, the likes of the Apache, and hopefully Storm Surf will take to their to their task in the same way that they have. Yes, um, it's, they they give these young horses confidence. If a horse is scared of something, they flight animals, so they're going to run away from it. We're having the the calmness of the ponies. You can take them onto the track, and they have a good experience. You're not having to fight with them to go onto the track. And also, I put a lot of our success down to our bridle paths we have in Reinke's Fontaine. Because all the babies, they get backed at home in the lunch ring, and then they ride out. We've got 32 kilometers of bridle paths here. And they all start hacking out, trotting on the bridle paths, and then graduate to going to the training center, to the tracks. I think it's the whole environment that is a feature of our success. So even though it's not a street, they become streetwise. Oh, very, very, yeah. Um, Jeff has always said that he loves getting horses in from us because he can get on with the, the training them. He doesn't have to teach them anything. You know? Some of them show you straight away. Yeah. There was another filly who's of St. John's, a Bezran filly in actual fact. And she, from day one, when we put a saddle on her, she knew what to do. We took her to the track. She went on the track. She cantered 400 meters, like an old horse. You know, and then you get others that you've just got to take your time with. And Sharon, Sean, not a hell of a lot of good fortune for him. Sean's been very unlucky because he had a dreadful accident when he was at Chongwini becoming a jockey in his second year of his apprenticeship. He somehow got kicked and almost decapitated. He was in a, a coma for oh, uh, seven days. Um, and unfortunately, he wasn't allowed to continue his, his uh, professional, you know, to finish his apprenticeship and that. But he's always been passionate about horses, so he went off to England and got a job in a top racing yard, road work. And, um, you know, uh, he, he just always did. And then we were lucky enough for him to be allowed to ride in work riders races here, which he did very well. And, um, you know, it was just tragic when, when the horse broke its leg. But we just got to look on the bright side. He was safe for something else. Um, it was so close to him being a paraplegic. And, um, you know, he's risen above it. He's thrown himself completely into running the yard. And he, he's passionate about horses. So, you know, we, we make a good team. Coral Fever on the outside. Talbury Fort is running on. And here comes the line. Talbury Fort or Coral Fever.